Hey, so it's Dave. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to get to do a video this week because I was having pretty limited success. I didn't really have a great deal to report. But the weekend has been good. Um, I've managed to get the leaf motor spinning with its original inverter. Now, I know there's been a few guys who managed to get it done online. Um, not many people, so I'm pretty chuffed to have got that done. Um, lots of people have used alternate inverters, um, but this is using the Leaf's own inverter and Leaf motor. So before we get on to that, because I'm dying to show everybody, <laughs> um, uh, I need to set the camera up on a tripod because I want to make sure I've got both hands free. The motor obviously creates a lot of torque, it wants to fall over, I don't have it mounted on anything, so I need one hand on the on-off switch, one hand on the motor, just to make sure I've got control. So I'll mount the camera uh, on a tripod just before I do that. And just a few other updates really on, on what happened this week. Not very exciting, but I just still keep everybody up to date. So just spin the camera around again. First thing that happened was my copper arrived. So finally managed to get all my batteries connected up together to give me the full uh, full voltage. 392 volts I think I'm running out at the moment. Which then meant I could get all the voltage, uh, all the cables connected because I've got the rear 12 cells there, uh, all through to the original relay system and uh, back into the pack and of course now connected to the motor over here as well. Um, the BMS looks fairly autonomous, I don't really think I have to do a great deal. I'm going to monitor the shunts but from everything I'm reading and from everything I've seen with it, it just balances when it feels like it needs to balance. I don't think I need to do a great deal but I can watch it doing it. Um, another important bit of information if you've been watching my previous videos is you'll know that my BMS has a bit of damage on it. Now I've got everything plugged in I've been able to assess the damage and I'm pretty happy I should be able to fix it. Um, three of the cells give a slightly well a very very low voltage reading however if I measure the cells uh, with a voltmeter I get a normal voltage which means that yes it's damaged and I've tracked the actual circuitry on the board on the damaged part to the cable to the BMS cable using the wiring diagram that I found online which is upside down there and the cell 82 which is showing a low voltage is wire 82 and the other cells 81 and 83 which are low are either side of it so of course imagine when you're taking a, a battery's voltage you have to take both sides so I'd imagine because that one's dead in the middle then both batteries either side are not registering on the BMS correctly um, but because it is giving me voltages I think the main chip is good I think it's just the resistor and the diode that are faulty I'm going to get them replaced hopefully even next week and uh, that will be fully operational so that's brilliant news um, couldn't test any of that till the pack was up and running um, don't even have my Arduino plugged into the BMS at the moment because, as I say, it just works as it is. I've got all the relays here shown in the previous video. Oh, one other thing as well, I have just um, triggered the, uh, the st I've taken the two, oh, God, I'll get my words out, I've taken these two connectors out, the main high voltage and the car voltage one, um, and I've just put a wire in to trick the BMS into thinking that they are connected. Um, uh, the BMS does trigger a bit. Uh, goes one goes high or low when those are connected or not so it knows they're there or not so i thought the best thing to do is i'm not going to be using these cables i'll just trick it by just looping them around feedback loop and, uh, and the bms should be happy when it when it comes to doing charging and stuff later on right so i'll get the camera set up now and um, i'll show you the motor spinning just some quick wiring to show actually before i do the uh, full test is my arduino is now over here with the motor um, plugged into the inverter uh, so can high, can low again as normal with 12 volts and ground coming in. I've uh, got wires feeding it all the way from my, my power source. Um, again, I'd like to take credit that I've r and any of this, but I haven't. I found these wiring diagrams online and using them to power the inverter with 12 volts and, uh, and to send it ignition 12 volts as well. And my code here, which will make the inverter happy and send some torque requests to it. I'll just get the laptop now plugged in, won't bore you with those details, I'll fire it up and, uh, and I'll show you it spinning. Before I get the motor spinning, I just want to explain what I'm actually going to do. Um, no, I'm building up the suspense, but I didn't want to show you just a motor spinning, what actually going to, what is it going to be doing. So you're going to see a close-up shot of the rotor, the output of the, of the motor. Um, I'm going to turn the inverter on. After 10 seconds, my CAN bus system will give a small torque request. It'll only give a torque request for about a second which will be enough to get the motor spinning pretty quickly. Um, when the torque request goes back down to zero, the motor will just carry on at that RPM. 
Now I'm then going to leave it for spinning for a little bit and I'll turn the 12 volts off which will shut the motor or shut the inverter off and the motor will carry on spinning down to zero. Um, I know if I send a, or I think if I send a negative torque request it would bring the motor down with the inverter still on. Um, I've only had this going for the last hour, I'm actually stood in my pyjamas <laughs> so I haven't really got very far with it but just dead excited to get this out there and, uh, and show that I've got this working so um, I'll show it now. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my Arduino. Um, when that reconnects, that gives me my 10 second window to get the inverter on um, and it will send its one second pulse of torque. So just wait for that one second for that to start up. It's just recompiling, sending it to the Arduino. Okay, that's on. I've now sent the 12 volts. The relays have both switched, pre-charge and then charge. Wait for 10 seconds. Hold on to the motor. Uh, motor spinning and it will now maintain a constant RPM until I turn the 12 volts off and it'll spin down. Job done. Well chuffed. That's um, been quite a lot of agonising research and pain and uh, that's now working. So what's next? Uh, I'm well chuffed to get that spinning. That's a massive proof of concept. I can now plan getting this in the RX-8. But of course, I've already got an RX-8 outside that's an EV car. You know, I built an EV already. It's just pretty rubbish. Um, so I'll probably make a time-lapse video of that being taken apart. It's going to take me quite a while to take it apart. There's a lot of infrastructure built in there, a lot of metal work that I fabricated. All got to come out because it's just not going to fit this new kit in there. So I'll strip that out. It's going to take me a couple of weeks. Um, I do still have the charger actually, the uh, leaf charger unit, don't know how to get that working yet or the DC to DC component in there. So I might do a bit of research on that but I think primarily now I need to strip out the RX-8 and start planning the installation. I'm a very hands on planner, I don't want to do it all on paper, I like to marry up the motor, put it in there, visually have a look, take some measurements and, uh, and work out what I need to build. So um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, Keep seeing how I'm getting on. I know not many people have actually got one of these working uh, with its original inverter. Really excited to get this in the RX-8 and, uh, and uh, make a new, much better version. Cheers.